So last class, I show it to you the uh, relevance of graphs on the web, right? So the idea in the last class is why we need a graph model, why we need graphs, and why graphs are so important to the web. Okay, so I showed you. Let let us try to remember what is the striking point. You can tell in Portuguese if you wish. So I showed you the linked data, right? The thing is that everything is connected in this approach. What more? Which more? The social effect. You remember things are connected, and and I can. Uh, get things from the connections or oh, no? No, I didn't show that, right? No, I jump at this part. Now I remember. Okay, which more? I did a comparison between the relational and the graph model. I showed the importance and also XML a bit, right? And the importance of having graphs as a way to connect things, right? Today we will go deep. In the model, we will try to understand the how the model behaves, okay, and how the approaches on the web exploit it to do things, okay. So we will see, in a nutshell, uh, more or less two ways to see the thing, which are the base of my research, in fact, okay. The idea is you can. Think we have a graph, and this graph can go from less formal to more formal. Okay, so the knowledge that the graph express can be really, really not so much formal, which is a kind of graph with labels and so on, and can be highly formal. Then you go to ontologies, knowledge representation, and so on and so forth. And what is the difference between them? There is a big difference because we, when we go down, we work with patterns, just patterns. We try to, to find patterns and do things in patterns. And when we go up, we work with knowledge, inference, and other kinds more hard to work. Okay? So, let's, let's start talking about the graph model. Okay? And, I will start talking to you about the RDF graph model because it's the, the, the simpler one, okay? But we will not go deep in the RDF graph today because uh, this is a part of semantic web issue. So when we go and uh, when I explain to you the semantic web uh, basis, we will go deep to talk about the RDF graph, okay? So I talked a bit last class. The principle of RDF is everything is a triple resource, property, value. And that's it. This is so clear in RDF that we have triple databases. What's a triple database? It's a database that stores just a bunch of triples. And that's it. Why? Because Everything in RDF becomes a triple. Okay? So the triple is the first is the resource. The resource is something I want to describe. The second guy is what we call property. Okay? Which is some property describing the resource. And the third is the value, which can be literal. If the value is literal, okay, like this one. We usually, but there is no formal representation, okay? There is still no agreement in a unique kind of representation for uh, RDF, like we have, for example, UML or something. We don't have that in RDF yet. But usually, if you read material from RDF, people use a square or a rectangle to represent uh, literals, which are final nodes. We can go. We cannot go beyond. So a, a literal will be a number, will be a string, will be a date, some kind of final value, which has a type. And here we can use XML schema types. So 
So if you remember when we study at XML schema, we have a lot of types there, and we can use them here, okay, to define that the value is a date or the value is a number, okay. Okay, but your value can be another node, okay, and in this case it is not a literal, okay, is another node, and this node can be described itself. So, for this reason, uh, we can have, we can concatenate, right? We have a resource, a property, and a value. And this value becomes a new resource which we want to describe, which has a property, which has a value. Okay? You can go fa as far as you want. Okay? You just stop in the final nodes, in the literals, or you are not enforced to describe a node. You are not enforced. So you can stop in the, in the, even in the other nodes. Okay? Yes, I will explain that they are unique if they are not literals. Okay? The literals are the guys that are not unique. The other guys, all other guys, are represented by URIs, so they are unique. Right? Say so, yes. Uh, this is a good question. The thing is, this thing I'm showing you is a didactical representation, but it's not that in the idea. I will show you further that I cannot put these kind of things inside the RDF nodes. All nodes are URIs. All nodes. So, no exception. Only the literals are not URIs. Okay? No exception. So, any node is an URI. So, if you are two different people, are two different URIs. Doesn't matter their names. Okay? And even the properties are URIs. Okay? Only, the only thing that are not an URI is the value of a literal. Just that. Okay? Did you understand the question of her question? Everybody understood? Oh, let me get the present list. Hmm. I brought the wrong one. I, I, I brought the wrong one, but it's, it's, you can put your name. Alright. So, uh, let me see if I show that here. Oh, da, 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 da. No, I don't think so. But, yeah, because I didn't show here, because the focus today is not in RDF, but it's important to show you that. So, in fact, what happens here, this is the didactical purpose, okay? But this guy here is the thing that I showed in the, in the, in the beginning, right? This guy here will be a kind of where I. Okay, this guy here, 
will be also L and Y high. And you can ask me why size is not a label, it's just an URI. Okay? And there is a reason to that. And the reason is the following. We will use the same property in several edges. Okay? How can I say that I'm using the same property? Okay? How can I say? So, in this case, I know that's the same because I use the same URI. So, I know it's the same. Okay? And this is interesting because I will show you that we must sometimes, in other models, we simulate the same thing because we want to achieve the same uh, result. So, sometimes. For example, I will show you that in Neo4j, you put any label you want. But then we have this problem. I never know when we are talking, we are talking about the same property. And this is, in my point of view, this is highly important in graph databases. Because you usually use the same guy, right? So, so we simulate things by using URIs, okay? But then you can ask me, but André... We have a problem because of now we have a problem because let's consider the following. Okay, this is two nodes. Okay, and and I show it in the last time, right? That we have another triple resource property value. You remember that? Okay, and now consider this guy there. Uh, so this. Node is a Plesiosaurus deinonychus, which is a species. Okay, and then I will tell you this is not they will not will be a name, will be an URI. Okay, good. And then you tell me, but Andre, if this is an URI, where are you put the name of the specimen, right? Because it's if this is an URI. Where it will be the name of the specimen itself? Can you tell me that? Did you understand my question or not? So, if instead of Plesiosaurus dolocodeus, who can read that? Let's see. One point if someone reads it correctly. <laughs> okay. So, instead of putting this name, okay, we will have HTTP. Right? Lash, lash, blah, blah, blah. Okay? This will be the thing. How can I have the real specimen name? Because I need that. It's a knowledge base. Right? How? No. It's not the, because sometimes, and usually it's much, much more usually, I talk about that, we use numbers. Yeah, I will talk about identification, and I will tell you there is a, a, a thing that we call um, the, the problem of using names in the URI is the following. Consider this name, okay? But then in the future, biologists think, okay, but it's not exactly this name, it's another name. They do that a lot, okay? They do that a lot. They change names of things, okay? And what happens? Okay, you change the name, but you cannot change the URI because the URI is the connection of everything. Okay, you cannot change URIs. URIs are forever. You must put that in your mind. Are forever. You don't change anymore. Okay. And the problem is, if you put the name in the URI, okay, and then you change it, it's a, it's a, a huge problem. Okay. So what people does? They use a number. <laughs> Just a number. Because numbers are numbers. You can change the name of the animal as you wish. And it's still the same number. But then, where we extract the name? Someone has some kind of idea? You can tell in Portuguese. Nobody? Who can tell me? I must train the, na the names. You don't know? No? Then. You. 
What's your name again? Luis. How you can put the name of the dinosaur there? It's a good guess. I like when you try something. It's important. But the problem is, I cannot, in, in, the air, in this model, I cannot have things outside the graph. I cannot see. Everything is outside the graph, is outside our knowledge space, in some sense. So if you put in a document, but it's outside the graph, it must be there, in the graph. Hmm? Yes, so what's the only thing is not in URI, is the literal, right? So the literal, so what you do? You do the following. Let me see here, no, this one. What you do? You see, is the thing I told you. The, 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 usually the node becomes a, a URI with a number at the end, something like that, okay? An ugly, ugly thing, okay? But then you can produce... Uh, an edge label, which is, I, when I explain RDF deeply, I show that there is the standard property we call label, RDF label, okay? And the label, uh, the knowledge base is known, which is the description, the textual description for poor human beings, which are you, okay, of the, uh, the, the thing. So then you put the real name, okay? The same thing if you want to put a popular name, okay? And you can use even languages. And I'll talk about this thing of language further, because I don't like it. This kind of uh, at PTBR, this is a kind of ugly way to do things, okay? But it's, it's true, it exists. Okay, so you may imagine, the, the, the thing here, the important thing here is everything in RDF is a node or an edge. And that's it. And we can describe everything as resource property value, resource property value. Okay? And, and there you see the thing I told you, that, for example, uh, here, I, uh, here you see, there is a drawing of lime regions, but in fact it's not that. We will have an URI, okay, of lime regions, okay, which could be, for example, from DBpedia or any place you want. Geonames, for example, geonames could be. Another UI high from England, you see. And if you want a text to people read, you put the label guy and you put here the name. Okay. And you produce like that. Okay. So, in fact, at the end, oh, okay, here I'm using namespaces, okay, just so you can understand here easily. So, Wiki, you see, this is a namespace, so this is also a URI, and here we will have also an URI, okay? And for each property, I have an URI, okay? And I will show you further that since I use an URI for properties, okay, since I use for properties, I can produce, uh, I can have a vocabulary, so I know I can record in some place the meaning of this property. Okay, and you can imagine that there is an, a better image you can see there. The nodes are URIs, the properties are URIs, and the thing is, you can connect everything you wish. Okay, so here is not, I don't know if it's too readable, but you may imagine that there is this book. And this book has an URI, which, uh, whose author or creator is this guy here, right? And then he has a contract with this publisher, 
which he published this book and so on and so forth. So, you see, we have a graph of knowledge. But until now, you don't know exactly why this is so formal, right? And uh, we will exploit the formality of this graph further. For now, I'm just interested in the model. The idea of the model is everything is a node or an edge. Okay? Good. Now I will show you a second model we call property graph, which is a bit different of the first one. Okay? So the property graph is has the same idea of node, okay? But nodes can have properties and values. Okay? The difference if you compare with the other model is the property and the value are not part are not in the graph are inside the node okay so now to show this model we will start running a database we call neo4j okay so if you want to use it play at home because i know today at night you will go at home and Start, right? Ah, you will play the Neo4j, right? Ah, I know that. I know. Instead of going to Facebook, you put that. No, nothing Facebook. Neo4j on the blood. Okay. So, how you run the Neo4j? You install it. If it's in Windows, it's really, really easy. It's next, next, next. This. Huh? And then you start his server. Okay? And all the interface is in the browser. So it's a beautiful, well done browser interface. Okay? And in this interface, they have uh, also help concepts. You have here the cipher language. So they show you uh, notions of cipher language. You have a kind of small tutorials here. Of cipher, you see, describing cipher, blah blah blah. You see, oh, it shows you how to use the language and so on and so forth. Okay, and on top of it, here you have a kind of console, okay, where you can write your statements in cipher, and it's so easy, so easy that now you will become cipher experts when you leave this class today, okay. Let's do it. So let's go. First, how to create a node? You use the statement create. Good. And then you must learn how to write things in cipher. So it's a graphic idea. Okay? Parentheses is like the, the edges of a node. Okay, so the node starts open parentheses and close when you close the parentheses. It's beautiful, right? So you may imagine that, for example, a node could be like this one, node. Okay? Uh, and, and if I want to create a node like uh, Triceratops, for example, okay? I can have a node like Triceratops. And this is a node. Good. But then you can have properties in the node, right? You put properties. And properties, you put properties. Dois uh, pontos. I don't know how to tell in English. Someone knows? No? Me neither. And the value. Okay? And uh, between, uh, I don't know, fancy brackets, no, it's curly brackets, inside the curly brackets, okay, so, <laughs> curly is a beautiful name, curly brackets, okay, so, let's try to tell you, I have 
I dinosaur. Okay. I will try, I will start for a simple example. I will put me in the database. Okay. So to put me in the database, I will start to do this, this thing here. You copy this thing. Uh, no, 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 not this thing. Let's create this guy here. This guy here. So what this statement tell us? You see? And it's put colors. It's really beautiful. Online. Everything is cute. Okay. So, let's interpret this statement. Okay? You put create. Fine. And then, you put between your uh, parentheses the name of your edge. Which I call dinosaur. Okay. In fact, uh, you can you can use the name you want. Okay. But usually people put a kind of type of the node. We use a kind of type of the node. It's not the name of the node. It's the content of the node. Okay. People usually put a type. For, so, for example, I use it dinosaur. As a type, okay. So I'm telling, I'm creating a dinosaur node, okay. And why we have? How can I say? Let me see here. Just a minute. How can I say this in English? It's. Let's ask for Google. Hello, Google. How can I say? Column. Oh, okay, column. Okay. The other one is semicolon, right? So this is column. Okay. Makes sense. So, why I put column before dinosaur? Okay? I will not tell you that now. You just uh, uh, stay with your question. Further, I will explain you why we have this column. Okay? For now on, it's, you must know that you put this column, okay? But then you put, usually we can call the type of the node, even though in graph databases, we actually, we don't have types. We have labels, okay? So it's like this node has a kind of label. Are you following me? Dinosaur. And then I will exploit this label in the future. Okay. Okay. But since dinosaur has some properties, okay, I will open the curly bracket, okay, and then I will put the property and the value, and comma, property value, okay, and do like that. And I pu can put as many properties as I want, okay. So what this statement does? This statement does exactly this thing. Let me show you. You see, I will tell. I have this guy here, okay, which is the name of the guy, and we have two properties. Oh God, come here, okay, which are uh, size and recognize it, okay, but uh, no, I put, it's different, right? It's different. Because I, I put an ID and I put a property size, okay, and I didn't put the recognize it, okay. So I have two properties, the name and the size. And it is a dinosaur node, okay. I will do a play here and it tells me. Added one label, created one node, blah, blah, blah. Okay? And if you like visual things, you click in this guy here on the left. Let me show you. I don't know if it will appear for people which is not on the web. Yes. You click in this guy here. And... What is it? What is it? Hello? Where are you? Displaying zero nodes, zero relationships. 
Oh, good for you. Where is my... Hmm. Just a minute. I think I must click here. Oh, it's here? Hmm. Okay, and then I click here. Yes? Yes! Okay. So, it shows me... What it shows me? It shows me that this is a class of nodes. You have one node. Okay, we have one node here. You see? One node. And this is a dinosaur node. Okay? This is not a node, okay? This is the legenda, okay? This is the legenda. This is one node. So we have just one node, and we, it, it's a dinosaur node. So it puts in a color, okay? And this node, and this is a basic principle of graph database. This node has unique identified in the graph. How? Is the same principle of object oriented languages. Okay? It has a unique ID which is not something you give to it. It produces. Okay? So when I click on it. Go, guy, go. Okay. It will show me on the top zero. You see zero there? This zero number is the unique identifier of the node. The second node will be 1, the third will be 2, and you don't control that, you don't give the numbers, the system gives the numbers, and it's unique. And is the thing that transforms this node unique in the database. You can produce two nodes with exactly the same content, if you wish. The same type and the same uh, properties, if you wish. It's not a problem. Okay? But why they will be different? They will be different because they will have two different unique IDs. And this in some sense replaces the URI. Okay? Because the URI gives to the nodes in the RDF the unicity. Okay? And here no. And what do you think is the advantages and the disadvantages of this approach. Now let's see if you can think with me. Because now is the web thing of the thing. Okay. This is simple, right? It produces a number. Simple. But there is there is a limitation of this approach. Which is Yeah, more or less. I mean, you don't have access to the unique identifications, right? But even in the RDF, we don't care too much uh, to the where eyes. They are in the background in some sense. Even though we can see them, there is another much more important thing. I can tell you. I will tell you the following. RDF cannot survive in this way. And there are some reasons to that. Let me ask you the following. You want to produce a linked data. Okay? So in the linked data, the nodes are in the same place? No. Who is the zero? Or who will be the zero? Consider you want to start now. There is no node in the linked data. Who will be the zero? You have the following problem. First, who tells 
who is the zero? Because I have several machines, several databases connected. So there are no central control to define who is the zero, right? Or who is the next? One or two or three, doesn't matter. Okay, so this control is a central control. Someone controls who is the next identifier. When you go to the central to the distributed, which is RDF, you must have a way to unique identify in the distributed way. Okay? And cannot be that. Did you understand? Do you understand? No? No? So consider you understand this 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 way to do the thing? Do you understand? Okay. So someone, a central database, Neo4j, okay, is empty. So the first node is zero. The second node is one. And three, two and three and so on. Okay. But if you think in RDF or in linked data, we are thinking in a distributed way. So there are several bases with several people feeding them. Okay? So let's consider we have five different places. Five. And these five different places are feeding the database. Now we want to add a new node. Which is the number you will receive for your node? It's not possible to define the next number if you don't have a central database. Because if you tell me the next is 4, but there are another guy in parallel doing the same thing, both you get 4, for example. This guy cannot know that you got the four before the number four before or after or so on and so forth. And if you are unconnected, if you are offline some part of the time, is much worse. So there is no way to give things for each one if you don't have a central control. Right? So to be distributed, so in some sense a URI is a distributed way to produce unique identifiers. Got it? Got it? Okay. But here, no. Here, it produces a unique identifier like that. So, go ahead. Ah, this is an excellent question. Uh, two people can produce the same URI. If you follow the URI policy, not. Why? The right policy is the following. You can produce URIs of the domain you control. Right. So, I cannot produce URIs for the MIT domain or for the any domain or for the, I don't know. Yes, but there is a distinction between the way you produce and the way you guarantee is right to produce it. Okay? Okay. So, the semantic web gives you the tools to produce unique identifiers in a distributed way. So, the principle is if everybody follows the rules, it works. Okay? But, can we enforce people to produce the right way, no, we cannot enforce them. Okay. So, and for this reason, there is a guy that you talk about trust. Because in the, in the future, in the future, uh, these things, which now is not so important, will become more and more important. How can I guarantee that this where I is trustable, for example? So this will be a problem. But in some sense, I cannot enforce the right use, but I can, I can get, give you tools to do that. Just that. Do you understand the difference? So for example, I produce things for the semantic web. I produce things for linked data. And I know that everything I produce, I, I, can, I must use just the URIs I have control, not the others. The domains I have control. So, if you remember, I showed to you my PURL. 
You know that I showed you? The, 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 my permanent URL is this guy here. P-U-R-L dot org Baha I think it's this guy here. This is mine and probably forever. Okay. And I can it can point to any place I want and I can even change the place it's it's points. Okay. I'm pointing to a, a page, but okay, so this URI here. Uh, I produce it in this website, the URL, and it's mine. I administrate it. Okay? So, the rules is, I can produce any address I want below that, if I want. I can, it's mine. It's my control. Okay? So, this is the basic idea. You can distribute the control and this, the ways of how you do that. Okay? Okay, so, but, but let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's say, let's say that you want to create uh, a species, a species, Triceratops oridus. Okay. So you create a node here. Okay. Let's go here. No, it's not here. It's here. Okay. Let's go. Okay. And now I you, you come here and create. A node. So let's follow the rules. Create and the type is a species. So I put a colon a species, right? And the properties is ID Triceratops sohidus. Okay? And I do play. Fair enough. It executed. And now You will see two nodes. Okay? So this node here is one. You see? Is the one. Okay? And its ID is a property, Triceratops sohisus. And this is the zero and has two properties. Okay? And you see the color of the node is, uh, tells you the type. Okay, so uh, the the interface is programmed to get the property whose name is ID and show in the in the node so you can see a uh, okay. But ID is a property like any other property. Okay, and you can even configure if you want the tool to show the number zero one two. Good. Let's create a third node which is a place. Lens Creek. Okay. So I will do the same thing here. Lens Creek. So now I have three kinds of nodes dinosaur, species, and place. Got it? Now, I want to connect nodes. I want to plug one node to the other. Okay? Following? Okay. So, how do you do that? Okay. There are two ways to do that. The easiest and the hardest. I'll show you first the hardest. <laughs> and why? Because I want... To take advantage of the nodes that are already in the in the place. So the hardest is when you have the nodes already and you want to connect them. Okay. In this case, I you must find the nodes, and when you find the nodes, you ask to connect them. How you find a node? You use this match statement. Okay. 
So a match statement is a statement in which you put a pattern and the system you try to find a node or a set of nodes that fits in the pattern. Okay? So for example, I put match and a variable name and you, you understand what is a variable name, but is a variable name of a node where its ID is this one. Okay? So what I'm looking for? I'm looking some node I'm calling generically DN. Okay? But could be anything, could be a letter A or could be any kind of symbol. Okay? So DN is any symbol I, I decided to represent this node. Okay? You may imagine that the, the end will receive the number of the node, if you wish. Okay? But I want to find one which ID is this one. Okay? Did you got it? Did you get it? Right? So, I want to also find a second node, I will call PL, okay? Whose ID is Lance Creek. Okay? So the first node is the dinosaur or the, the, yeah, the dinosaur, right? The second node is the place. And then I want to connect both, okay? So what I do, I put the first one, the end, which is the guy that I found here. The second one place, which is the guy that I found here, and an edge connect them. So this is the representation for a, an edge. For example, if we go here to see, let me show you, let me see where, oh, I didn't put that. Okay, but, oh, here I show you, node, edge, node. So the thing is, an edge is represented by, how can I say, it's like this one is an arrow. You see an arrow here? An arrow, okay. And between brackets, you put the type the same way, two dots and the type like we use the type of the nodes. So in this case the type is found. Okay, I found it. Okay. So let's this is all this thing is one statement. One single statement. And I will put here here. And when you do play here, it will do the thing. Okay. You see? And the edge has the type found. Okay? And then you see the same thing you see for the nodes. Each edge is unique. So this is the edge zero. Okay? And again, it will produce edges. Okay? No, the ID, what do you mean ID? The type or the ID? Okay. No. Yes. Yes. What, what, what the, what the statement will you do? For each for each node that matches the match, it supplies the edge. Okay? So if you, you get the first one and you do the, the thing, and the second one you do the same thing. 
So it will produce an edge for each pair that matches the thing. Okay? We will exploit more of match further here. Okay? But match, match is something that you give a pattern and everybody that fills the pattern goes in the process. Okay? Can I go ahead? Okay, so if I want, if I want, I can do the following. Now, I will produce the complete guy. You see, the other way to do the same thing I did, the same thing I did, you see, the other way to do that is put everything in a single statement, like this one. Okay, so here, if you see, I'm doing the same thing but in a single punch. I have the idea of the specimen, the species, and the place. You see? And then, as I, I'm putting everything together, I can do the connections. But now, you must see something important. Now, you see that before the, the, before the column, I put the variable name. Do you see that? Before the column, I put the variable name. You see? And why I'm doing that? In, the, in, that, in that statement below, I need to do the match so I can find the nodes I want and then I connect them, okay? But if I'm doing everything in a single statement, okay, I put already a name of, is a temporary, this is temporary just for the command. I already give a name of a variable to each node so I can refer them below okay so for example i want to tell that this dinosaur is connected to this is this species since i use that and that you see i just put the first one and the second one here and the system will know that is the first node I created and the second and i connected them this is local in the sense that it 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 valid only when the start everything is in the same statement. Okay, after the statement execute you execute the statement, you cannot use these variable and names anymore. Okay, so in any case, the variable names are only for local purposes. Did you got it? Or did you get it? Yes, everybody. So, I will delete our previous dinosaur, I will delete it, and I will delete not just the dinosaur, but I will delete everything. So, first of all, no, no this guy, I will start in deleting Hmm. I'm thinking how I can delete everything. Uh, how can I delete everything? It's I must delete this edge, right? So okay, it's I can do the same statement. You see how to delete an edge? You put the matches and then you delete. Now let me see. No, no. Let me do the following. Yes, it's this one. So I do match. I want to delete the the edge. Okay. So I do match. Uh, the end. Found.
here I put a, a name edge for example appear okay so in this case I'm telling the system find any edge whose label is found whose type is found any edge okay and then delete edge so it will delete all guys which fits in this if I have three edges with found type it will delete the tree oh excellent excellent good idea I don't know if I can do in the same delete but you put here delete dn and delete pl excellent idea Wow! Just now we have just the Triceratops sohidus. You see here. Now I do match where is I put here. SP just to it doesn't matter the name of the variable okay I am putting here just to follow some kind of interesting stem so I will, I will delete this guy here good and play right so now it's empty empty okay so now let's see if you understand that. I you create a huge I create everything in a single punch. Okay? I am creating three nodes and two edges. Okay? So I do play here. And you see, it created three nodes and two edges. Everybody understood? You can ask me in Portuguese. Everybody understood? Right. So this is the creation scene. Okay. Now, let's go to the matching scene. Okay? So this is the first block of things. This is one block of things, right? This is another block of things in which I created a lot of things. This is another block in which I deleted everything I did. Now let's do this match. So the match guy is for any pattern you are looking for in your graph. Okay? So, for example, let's analyze this match. You can use match uh, y, which is an x. Okay? So, uh, I'm telling, okay. You want I want to find a node which has the is a property. Okay? So it is a something. <laughs> right? And a node that has a found property for a place P. Okay? And P ID is Lance Creek. So what I'm looking for here. 
is some kind of uh, if I'm considering that is a uh, is applied only for species for example or or living beings I'm looking for a living being found in Lance Creek okay and it returns it so let's that, let's take a look on that if I do that when I do play it will return to me where is it ah I must put a table guy no okay so you see there it returned Triceratops horridus which is the guy that fits in my request now take a look on that okay so if I want to return all let, let's consider here the following I will create two species Triceratops horridus okay I create two species or two animals okay so I will do a create I will tell this is a dinosaur again okay a dinosaur right and it has an ID no it's not like that is a curly bracket ID uh, got uh, some some identifier okay doesn't matter okay uh, what more it's okay and uh, then I will give here a local name I will call D for example okay God and oh God when I when I press enter it <laughs> ah. Ah. okay it created my node oh it created my node so uh, if you see here now no let me show you in this kind of view. Okay. So it created my node here. You see my dinosaur here. So let's let's uh, connect it to the Triceratops. I want to tell that this guy is a Triceratops. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let me let me put the history of the commands here in case you want. Okay, I created the guy. Okay, now I want to match. What I want to match? The D, right? The D, which is I have a D. I do the, the the same thing I did here. Okay, I put D where the property ID uh, equals this guy. I want to match. Um, a species where the species ID is Triceratops sorridus. Okay, and I want to connect D by is a I don't know if I wrote in this way. No, this are uh, like that. S. 
Funny, right? Right? What? P? No, I call it S. Yeah, and this is the important thing. It's a local name. It's the name I gave here. You see, here I called S. In the previous comment, I called it SP. But doesn't matter. You can use the name of variable you want. You can even call A. It is valid only inside this statement. After the statement, the name of the variable is appeared. Okay? So, ah, invalid. What happened? Ah, good. It's missing create. You are then right. Good. I don't know how it doesn't show me the updated view. So now I have two guys which are Triceratops ohidus. Okay? But now I want all guys that are Triceratops ohidus. What you call here? Match. I want to list all Triceratops ohidus. Dinosaurs were what? What? ID doesn't matter. I want all that whose species is Triceratops ohidus. So it doesn't matter the ID, right? Good. You must have an is a, right? You must have an is a relationship with who? With some species, some species, okay, and then you match the species where what SAD equals the ceratops. Ohidus. Right? And what you do is that you can give return D, which is the dinosaur I'm looking for, ID. Okay? So, it will return to me it will return to me the IDs of the dinosaurs which are Triceratops ohidus. Okay. Good. Fair enough. But where is it? Yeah. Now, let's consider the following. There is one species which is a Q equivalent to Triceratops orhidus. Okay? Another kind of Triceratops. So it's good. For example, blah, 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 blah. Triceratops calicornis. Calicornis. Okay. So let's go there and create 
a species create a species no create species right create species I call S ID Triceratops Calicornis Got it Calicornis Okay But I will also create a dinosaur ID la la okay and I will create a node from D is a S. Got it? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Create again? Ah, oh, yeah, create again. You are damn right. Okay, so if you understood, I have created here a new kind of Triceratops, Calicornis, and a dinosaur, which is that. Okay, now I want to tell that both are equivalent. Hmm, it's becoming better, right? So now, uh, okay, better. No, please help me now. So uh, let me just copy it to document in my notepad because in the next class I don't need to remember that. Okay, so uh, now I want to connect both, both uh, species. Okay, so how can I do that? Match. Uh, S1, right? Where ID is Triceratops sorridus. Okay? Match S2, where ID is Triceratops calicornis. And then create S two for example equivalent S one. Okay, got it. What? Ah, okay. You are right. Okay, so now this guy is equivalent to this guy. Okay? Now I want to improve my match because I want to show everybody which is which is Triceratops sorridus, but I want to consider the key equivalents. Mm. So let's let's go the, do the following. See, 
let's go and get our first guy here. Is this one? You remember that? I matching all Triceratops ohidus, right? But in this case, it doesn't consider the equivalence. Okay. Now I want to add the equivalent. So if something is equivalent to Triceratops hirus, I want also consider this guy. This is funny. Go ahead. So, how it will be? So, we can we can have uh, a bigger guy, right? Now I'm I'm trying to remember how to put this as a, an R. Not an end. Just a minute. Let me get some help here. Here you have all the reference if you want in Cypher. Um, I'm looking here, here for a for a, an R. Okay, not this one. Yeah, because are two possible paths. I'm trying to figure out because we can do the following. Another path is D D is a something. I don't need I even it's not mandatory to give a name after the node. It's any node. Okay? And then this node is equivalent to S. This is the thing. Okay? But in this case, it will do an end. I think so. So it will come back empty. If I'm right, it will come back empty. Zero. Right. Nothing. Because I can do just the, first, the second one. And it will return just the blah blah, okay? Because blah blah is in some way uh, equivalent, right? In that path. Uh, huh? Union. Yeah, you are right. That is the union guy. You are right. You are right. In Cypher you can put union, right? There is a reference here. Let me find the reference here. Concepts. No, it's not concept, right? No. Neo for J manual. This one. Oh, not this one. Uh, I don't know. I think union is the way they are considering. 
Let me just get the syntax of uni. Ah. Union is a way to do that, if you wish. You put union and I think the two guys. Match return, union, match return. It's probably like match. I don't know if the union is like that. Union. Okay, so you have two guys here, and yeah, I don't know if there is an R thing. Probably also could have an R thing. Yeah, union returns everything. But uh, okay, it's a kind of union here or R, but but. Uh, we can see it's possible to have an R or something. But one thing you must see is... Let me show you something, a final thing, because you're almost finishing here. Okay, is... Uh, okay, there is a way to tell in, in, uh, in this language that... Let me show you in the match, probably, that you can match one or more match where no, match so match clause blah 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 oh there is a join also hmm Okay, but it's not the thing I'm looking for. Let me see. Because there is a way to tell that you match in more than one level. Let me see here. Cipher here. There is something that you tell. Yeah, no, 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 not in this. Okay, so not we don't. But the thing is, I can even tell. I don't remember how, how, but I can even tell that there is one or more levels of is a, for example. Okay, so for example, if I want to have, I have something in a, in a level. In a species, then a gen, uh, gen, and a family. So I have a, 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 a bigger node there. Okay. And I want to tell is something like, let me draw here, which is easier to. Oh, is this, is this, is this kind of thing here? Let me show you. Here is easier to see. Is the example that I gave to you of this guy here. Okay. So consider here you have part of. So one is part of the other, which is part of the other, which is part of the other. Okay. So uh, in Cypher there is a way which you can tell that is zero or more or one or more part of edge, edges. Okay. So it it will find the patterns that matches two nodes with one or more part of edges. Okay. The thing here is. When you build graphs, you have labels, and your query, as we show it here, they don't care about the strong schemas that we have in relational database. They are not thinking about that. They find uh, patterns 
based it in the labels you gave, okay? And the patterns that matches your query, they give you back, okay? But we don't do inferences here. What I call inference, for example, when I created this equivalent, okay? The system by itself will not infer they are equivalent, so if I ask for one, it also gives me the other. Okay? You do not do that. You must write in your query sentence. Okay? But when you use RDF, I will show you that the system can infer that. So you don't need to, to put in your query. You just ask and the system knows if it's equivalent, it can treat as the same, for example. It's an inference as a rule. So the system infers that and treats uh, according. Okay? Okay. So, that's it for today.